thank you so much. Let me make sure that we're set up here. Uh, but in the meantime, while we're waiting, I want to thank y'all for having me. I noticed that uh, Liam said y'all. Did you hear him say y'all? <laughs> he stole that from us. Right? <laughs> Okay, so we'll get, I, I want to thank the, the Darwin Day Organizing Committee and all of the organizations that jointly are hosting this event. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here. This is the first time I've been to Sacramento. <clears throat> and we'll get going in just a minute. I've had the pleasure of meeting some people that I've talked to on email today, but I've never got to meet them in person. Go, we're ready. Um, well, I always like to have a few pictures of the areas where I visit, so I've picked some of your, some very pretty pictures from your area uh, to start off. But I'm gonna let you watch a little television first. Oh, thank you. Well, the saints might go marching into New Orleans, but the scientists are marching right out. A group of more than 2,000 biologists has decided not to hold its 2011 annual meeting in the Big Easy. The reason? Louisiana has a law that allows teachers to use supplemental materials in science class, things other than the state-approved curriculum. Republican up-and-comer Bobby Jindal signed it last summer after it passed the state legislature with overwhelming support. The scientific community says the law is nothing more than a free pass for the teaching of creationism and that religion has no place in a biology class. The Times-Picayune reports that Governor Jindal has not responded to the letter from the scientists. Either way, they've already moved on to Utah, where they say the laws protect science. Salt Lake City, more progressive than New Orleans? Now there's a clear argument that evolution exists. That's a page from my notebook. I'm Katie Couric, CBS News. What Katie was talking about is the 2008 Louisiana Science Education Act. And I'll tell you more about um, the, the, what she just mentioned, the scientists deciding to hold their um, meeting in Salt Lake City. I'll have more to say about that in a minute. Um, but I'm here to talk about the Louisiana Science Education Act. And, and you know, I, I can't see California ever having anything like this, to tell you the truth. Um, but there might be a little bit of something you can learn from it. And so, uh, uh, consistent with Minga's request, I'm here to tell you what you can learn from the Louisiana Science Education Act. Um, and so I call this back to the future, uh, and you'll see why in a second. But this is, our, of course, our governor, right there, Bobby Jindal, with the senator, Louisiana senator, who sponsored the bill. It passed both houses of the legislature with only three dissenting votes out of both houses. And I call this back to the future because we've already done this once. In 1981, Louisiana passed the Balanced Treatment of Evolution Science and Creation Science Act, which required teachers to teach creation science whenever they taught evolution. That was very quickly litigated. <clears throat> Thank you very much. And in 1987, the Supreme Court, in its Edwards versus Aguilar ruling, declared the teaching of creation science to be unconstitutional. But unfortunately, that did not put an end to the efforts of creationists to get their materials and their ideas into the classroom. And so here we are in Louisiana doing the same thing all over again, but with a slightly different twist. So what is the Louisiana Science Education Act? Well, let me run through it very quickly, since you probably can't see these letters. Uh, they're a, a bit small from where you are. Um, the law is a permissive law. It doesn't require anybody to do anything. And what it does, you know, very quickly, it requires the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education to create an environment that permits uh, school boards to allow and assist teachers, principals, and other school administrators to create and foster an environment within public elementary and secondary schools that promotes critical thinking skills. Now, that is the operative code term in this bill, critical thinking logical analysis and open and objective discussion of scientific theories being studied, including but not limited to, and here are the targets. Evolution, which is pretty much the primary target. Evolution, the origins of life, global warming, warming and human cloning. Now, in order to forestall the accusation that they were highlighting or targeting specifically, singling out evolution. The creationists behind this bill threw these other things there. Of course, these are all things they don't like. 
But in their comments about the legislation, all of their comments concern evolution. They very rarely mention any of these other things. So there's a little bit more to the law. Uh, the teacher has to teach the material that is required um, under the science teaching standards in Louisiana. But in addition to that, uh, the teachers can use supplemental textbooks and other instructional materials to help students understand, analyze, critique, and review scientific theories in an objective manner um, as permitted by the city, parish, or other local public school board unless otherwise prohibited by the State Board of Elementary and Secondary Education. Now what that means is that a teacher can use any type of creationist supplementary material that she wants to use until she gets caught. That's what this means. There's no list of prohibited materials. There is absolutely nothing in the way of guidelines as to what teachers may not use. Now this last part down there, I'm going to read it to you because you can't see it. <clears throat> This section shall not be construed to promote any religious doctrine, promote discrimination for or against a particular set of religious beliefs, or promote discrimination for or against religion or non-religion. And if we could possibly get that little bitty light out of my eyes, if you don't mind, we can just, could, you, need the, you need it? Okay. Okay, oh, you need to light me up. Oh, you don't need to light me up. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, that's, that's better. <laughs> okay. Now, that is a religion disclaimer at the, at the bottom. That came right from a model bill written by the Discovery Institute. And I'm going to tell you who these folks are. But that is a dead giveaway that this bill, despite disclaiming um, that it's promoting religion, it's a dead giveaway that it's promoting exactly that. It's promoting religion. So that's what the law says. Now, ultimately, the reason we have this law is because of these gentlemen right here. You probably have all heard of them. It's a creationist think tank up in Seattle called the Discovery Institute. And I'm not going to introduce you individually to them, but I will introduce you to a couple. Um, the Discovery Institute in 1996 set up its creationist subsidiary, which is now called the Center for Science and Culture. And the two fellows of the Discovery Institute who are affiliated with the center uh, that are the operatives that were involved down in Louisiana are David DeWolf, who is a law professor at Gonzaga University in Spokane. He helped fashion the version of the law that was passed. And Casey Luskin, who is a, uh, a young man who graduated from uh, UC San Diego, I believe, and then um, got a law degree. As far as we know, he's never actually practiced law. He went to work uh, right out of law school for the Discovery Institute. And I call him their utility infielder, because he does pretty much whatever they tell him to do. Um, and he came down to Louisiana to help promote the law, actually. So these are the people who are ultimately to blame for the fact that we have the Louisiana Science Education Act, because it's their promotion of intelligent design that has brought about this relentless effort to get something enacted as legislation around the country. And I'll have a lot more to say about that in just a little bit. So if you're interested in the, in the particulars of the Discovery Institute, um, you can get those in the book that I co-authored with Paul Gross, uh, Creationism's Trojan Horse, The Wedge of Intelligent Design. I like to acknowledge Paul because he's devoted his retirement years to protecting, helping to protect science education. Um, you can also watch uh, the special. It's on Google Video. You can just go online and watch it. Um, Judgment Day, it's about the Dover trial. You can get the whole two hours on Google Video and learn about the Kitzmiller case there. You can also go to the Center for Inquiries website and download for free a paper that I wrote. It's a little bit dated now. It's 2007, Understanding the Intelligent Design Creationist Movement, Its True Nature and Goals. You can download that in PDF. And if you have access to this journal, Evolution, Education, and Outreach, which is published by um, Niles Eldridge and his son Greg, you can read the, the most recent article that I've written. It's, a, it's pretty much about Louisiana. It's called, It's Deja Vu All Over Again, The Intelligent Design Movement's Re Recycling of Creationist Strategies. And the journal is Evolution, Education, and Outreach. You have to have a subscription unless you have a buddy that can get it for you. Okay. Now, what's happened is that the Discovery Institute is, after the Kitzmiller trial, 
um, they are now promoting intelligent design with the use of code language. Um, at, at the National Center for Science Education, where I'm on the, the board of directors, we knew that they were integrally involved in helping with the, the Dover trial. We knew that after the verdict, in which uh, the Discovery Institute uh, suffered a, a really stunning defeat, because they knew it was really all about them, um, that they would start using sanitized terminology to try to avoid using the term intelligent design, and that's exactly what they've done. Now, these are old uh, retreaded creationist code terms. The only one that's really sort of new is this one, teach the controversy, which they stole from the postmodernists, actually. Um, but it's to promote the idea that there's a controversy about evolution that students ought to be taught. Um, arguments for and against evolution or for and against neo Darwinism, that's an old creationist code term that they're now using. The one they had used in Texas is uh, strengths and weaknesses of evolution. That's all they want to do, just teach the strengths and weaknesses of evolution. Um, and in Louisiana, the two that they've used most often are critical analysis of evolution and academic freedom. And I have to add a new one uh, as of recently, analyze and evaluate whatever it is. Analyze and evaluate the fossil record or the Cambrian explosion, whatever it is. But this is becoming a very prominent code term, um, analyze and evaluate. So they're now operating with these, th these strategically chosen um, code terms to try to avoid direct challenges in court to the policies and the legislation. Um, now here, if you, I don't, you may have seen this, um, you probably know who that guy is right there, the guy. Uh, my comments are not really about him, but if you've seen the movie Expelled, um, that's Ben Stein who um, stars in that piece of drivel. Um, but this is the, I'm, I'm probably the first person or one of the first people that the associate producer tried to uh, hornswoggle into being in that film, and I'm, I was just a little bit too snoopy, and so he decided not to call me back. Um, Anyway, um, in 2007, the Discovery Institute put up, put up a website um, with its academic freedom petition. And in, in addition to that, this was their new front, academic freedom, which again is an all rehash from the creationism of the early 1980s. But they also put up their model academic freedom statute on evolution. See, even, even the model bill is, is phrased in a, in a very misleading way. And there is, in, in, you can look at it, it's still there, there is that religion disclaimer that is showing up, it's in the Louisiana law, and it is showing up, it is in, in, in no matter how many other bills have been introduced, that disclaimer is in every single one. So that is uh, one aspect of what the Discovery Institute has done that shows up in all the variations of the, of the legislation that's been introduced around the country. Um, and so if you want to see my analysis of the Louisiana legislation, you can go to the website that I keep. It's lasciencecoalition.org, the Louisiana Coalition for Science analysis of SB 733, that's Senate Bill 733, and you can download my analysis of the legislation that shows that it is a creationist bill. It's a stealth creationist bill. Now, how did we get it? Well, we got it because partnering, the Discovery Institute never comes in directly to a situation like this. They work through people on the ground. They work through local people, and that's what they did this time, so they were consistent. The Louisiana Family Forum is an arm of, is, is the Louisiana affiliate of Focus on the Family. You probably have all heard of Focus on the Family. And they uh, are headquartered a few blocks from the Capitol, down in Baton Rouge. And there is Reverend Gene Mills, who's executive director. You're going to meet him again. There is Daryl White, former uh, retired Baton Rouge City Court judge. And they are the, the, the two most prominent faces of this organization. And their website explains that their mission <coughs> is to persuasively present biblical principles in the centers of influence on issues affecting the family through research, communication, and networking. And boy, they do a lot of networking. They have, they have pastors that come from all over the state when the legislature is in session, and they fan out all over the state capitol. They have a statewide network of churches and organizations that support them. Now, you might be comforted to know that you have your own affiliate of Focus on the Family, uh, the California Family Family Council. You've got one of these, but I kind of think they're not going to be doing the same kind of stuff that the Louisiana Family Forum is doing. I don't know what their particular thing is. I find that most of these organizations are more concerned with what you do in your bedroom than anything else, right? Okay. Can I ask you, is that all affiliated with Dobbs? 
Dobson, yeah, that's uh, Focus on the Family. It was started by James Dobson, who has kind of, in a nominal fashion, stepped aside and, and let somebody else run it. Yes, ma'am. Focus on the Family. Uh, Colorado Springs. So these are the people who they they formed in 1999. Tony Perkins at the Family Research Council in Washington D.C. actually he's a Louisiana native who helped found this organization. So they were the ones who were promoting creationism and they got this bill introduced and they got it passed. Um, they had a little help. Okay, not that not, not what you think. Okay, although they probably were invoking that kind of help as well. Um, they had help from very highly placed elected officials. Senator David Vitter. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Um, you have? The one who got caught in a little bit of trouble, all right, and wound up in a little black book where he shouldn't have been? Okay. All right, that is the, the wash. no, that's the New Orleans madam that said he was one of her clients, and he got caught down in the French Quarter with a prostitute who has the same name as his wife. They're both named Wendy. So I thought you might be interested in that, that little tidbit. But anyway, one of, the, one of the family foreign people used to work for Vitter. So let's, let's get rid of that. OK. <laughs> anyway, in I think it was 2007, yes, um, Vitter earmarked $100,000 in, in public taxpayer money directly to, by name, to the Louisiana Family Forum to enact their anti-science agenda in Washita Parish, which is in North Louisiana. There it is right there. Can you see it? Now, those people up there, they do what they want, when they want. Nobody tells them what they can and can't do, even in, on the school board. And so in November 2006, they had adopted their, uh, an academic freedom policy, which turned out to be the template for the law that we now have, which, uh, you know, they said it was all about academic freedom, letting the teachers, you know, teach, um, you know, controversial subjects, blah, blah, blah. Well, he earmarked $100,000 for the Louisiana Family Forum to promote that program after that policy was adopted. Well, Bill Walsh at the New Orleans Times-Picayune found out about it, wrote an article about it, and Americans United for Separation of Church and State went to work rounding up organizations to try to lobby to get this earmark killed. Well, we, we, we got it to where he, he didn't drop it, but he redirected $30,000 of the money directly to the Washtenaw Parish School Board for quote unquote science and technology. I don't know what he, where the other 70,000 went. So they had, they had a high, some high powered help. You know, he was trying to help them. Um, and uh, so they, they uh, are very well connected politically. The, the state senator who introduced the bill for them, uh, Senator Ben Nevers, uh, he's from a rural area of Louisiana. He's, uh, he's an electrician um, by trade, but he's one of the most powerful members of the Louisiana legislature. And he sits on, I think he was the chair at the time, of the Senate Education Committee. So he was the right guy to have helping them. Um, he introduced the legislation on their behalf, but the problem was when you have people on the ground helping you out, they usually can't stay on script, right? And what he did when he was talking to my local paper, um, the Hammond, Louisiana Daily Star, he let the cat out of the bag. This is what he said. The Louisiana Family Forum believed that scientific data related to, wait for it, creationism, right, should be discussed when dealing with Darwin's theory. This would allow the discussion of scientific facts. I feel that the students should know that there are weaknesses and strengths in both scientific arguments. Well, he got the code language in there, but he also boo-booed when he said creationism. And so, boy, they did some really fast spinning. He denied that he had used the word. I called the reporter. She said, no, he used the exact word. Yeah. So anyway, um, they, but he's a very, very powerful senator, um, and they had his help as well. He sponsored the legislation. So it started in Washita Parish in November 2006, and then Senator Nevers, along with several other of his fellow state senators, got the bill introduced as Senate Bill 561. It was later renumbered to Senate Bill 5, uh, 733. It started off as the Louisiana Academic Freedom Act, and then it ended up as the Louisiana Science Education Act. And then, of course, working in the wings with him were Gene Mills, and Daryl White of the Louisiana Family Forum. So here are the key players, <clears throat> and I'm gonna let you guess who that one in the middle is. Don't say it if you think you know, just wait. There are Senator Nevers, of course, and there are Gene Mills and Daryl White from the Family Forum. 
Discovery Institute was in this up to their eyeballs, and they still are, by the way. Um, David DeWolf, who helped write the legislation or revise it. Um, Frank Hoffman, Representative Frank Hoffman, who was uh, the assistant superintendent um, uh, on the Washita Parish uh, School District when that policy was adopted there, but who by this time, in 2008, when the bill was introduced, was on the House Education Committee. So again, they had a key player in the House of Representatives to work the bill on the House Education Committee. They had all their bases covered. They also have a point man on the State Board of Elementary and Secondary Education. That's our state board named Dale Bayard. He takes his marching orders from the Louisiana Family Forum. So they had all their ducks lined up before the bill was ever introduced. Now who do you think though was the key player in this plan? Oh, you got it. There you go. My governor who wants to be your president, okay? <laughs> Don't forget that. He is one of the closest allies of the Louisiana Family Forum. They, they could have introduced this bill years earlier because they'd been promoting creationism for years, but they couldn't, they had to wait until they had a governor that they knew absolutely would sign it. And when, they, when Bobby Jindal was elected in 2007, it was time for them to move, and so they did just a few months later. So he was the key player. Now, there you go. You probably saw him in that capacity following President Obama's first major speech on TV. Okay, yeah, there he's doing his Kenneth the Page imitation, right? Now, how close is the governor to the Louisiana Family Forum? Very close. In fact, in, in Louisiana, he has consciously made his personal religion part of his political persona. He has done this unabashedly. In fact, he uses state taxpayer funds to take the state helicopter up to North Louisiana to go to church in Baptist churches on Sundays. He's Catholic, but his strongest base is in North Louisiana. And he is his strongest ally in the religious community is the Louisiana Family Forum. But the media in Louisiana were very reluctant to write about this because being, this being his personal religious you know, background. But one journalist, um, Adam Nossiter, who writes for the New York Times, but at the time he was in New Orleans, in, in their New Orleans office, he'd been sent down there to cover Katrina, he put two and two together. He, he was the only journalist who had put the, connected the dots between the Louisiana Family Forum and Bobby Jindal. And this article came out in the New York Times on June 2nd, 2008. This is the Family Forum's PDF copy that they made and were sending around to their followers to show how proud they were of their relationship with the governor. They did all the underlining of the parts they liked, and this was a part that they underlined that they really liked. The Reverend Jean Mills has become a frequent present presence in the legislative halls. At the group's modest offices here, Mr. Jindal is seen as practically one of the family, okay? Jindal goes to all of their events, but they don't, he, he doesn't release his schedule, so the public really doesn't know this. Um, but he goes to their, he, they, well, I'll, I'll show you one major event that they had for him. When he was elected in November 2007, the very next month, the Louisiana Family Forum had a big Christmas gala down at the old state capitol in Baton Rouge. It's that beautiful old Gothic building that Mark Twain thought was so ugly. But they, it's a there's a beautiful ballroom in there, so they, they rented it out and they had this great big ball. You can watch this on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and type in Louisiana Family Forum Governor's Christmas Gala and you can watch it, or part of it. And here's what happened. There is Gene Mills. There is Bobby Jindal, and during, with hundreds of people present, including, I think, all of the, the living former governors, except the one who was in the federal penitentiary at the time. Um, <laughs> he didn't get to go to this party. Uh, uh. Um, he underwent the laying on of hands. Now, do you, you folks know what that is? Now, down, from down south, we know what this is. It's, it's a religious, you know, it's a prayer where people come up and they lay their hands on, you know, the chosen one, and, um, and they say a prayer. And there's Bobby Jindal in front of hundreds of people, including several former governors, with Gene Mills presiding, undergoing the laying on of hands, okay? This is how close he is to the Louisiana Family Forum, okay? 
Now we knew that he was um, in favor of teaching creationism. There he is during his campaign right there. And when he ran for governor unsuccessfully in 2003, he was asked about uh, whether he supported teaching creationism, and it was very clear that he did. In fact, he even used a, a Discovery Institute soundbite. It's interesting. He said, "There's nothing wrong if somebody want, if people, um, if a teacher wanted to say that creationism is what some people believe and presented a quote range of views. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, range of views is code language for teaching both evolution and intelligent design. That's a Discovery Institute soundbite. Now, I don't know how the governor got it, but that's one of their signature soundbites. Then when he ran again in 2007, he was asked about it again on TV at a, at a public forum. And I'm not going to read all of this to you, but that's his answer. It was clear that he favored teaching children that quote different theories. Um, and uh, of course, one of which would be intelligent design, because that was specifically what he was asked about. Um, and so um, he signed at, uh, seven, Senate Bill 733 into law as Act 473. There, and look at all of the members of the House of Representatives who fell all over themselves to get listed as sponsors. Do you see how long the list that is? That's a very long list of sponsors. Now, we had petitioned him to veto the bill. We had science organizations writing to him. He, re he responded to nobody. He never, ever made a public statement about this. We even found his old genetics, well, not old, but his former genetics professor at Brown University, Dr. Arthur Landy, who had taught him. And he, you know, he made a public statement that was quoted in the paper, essentially asking the governor to veto the bill. Uh, he said, you know, when the governor was uh, in my class studying to become a doctor, which clearly he didn't become, um, he was a very good student. He, and he said, I would hope that he wouldn't do anything to make it more difficult for Louisiana students to become doctors. Um, and he was essentially asking him not to sign the bill. And that really resonated with me because my son is a doctor and he was educated in Louisiana and, you know, and, and got, I, I will say, got a very fine education at the, in the public system. Uh, but he ignored even Dr. Landy and, and just signed the bill without any announcement at all on my freaking birthday, right? <laughs> and just, uh, June 25th, 2008. And we found out about it two, la two days later. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to let you hear from the governor in, in June, the same month in which he signed the bill. He was on Face the Nation, and he was asked about this. Make a sharp turn here to a, a different issue, an issue that has raised some controversy. Now, you were a biology major in college. I think you had a double major, but you were a biology major, and you support the teaching of intelligent design in schools. Do you have doubts about the theory of evolution? A couple of things. One, I don't think this is something that federal or state government should be imposing its views on, on local school districts. You know, as a conservative, I think government that's closest to the people governs best. I think local school boards should be in a position of deciding their curricula and, and also deciding what students should be learning. Secondly, I don't think students learn by us withholding information from them. Some want only to teach intelligent design. Some only want to teach evolution. I think both views are, are wrong. As How about parent, you personally? Where do you stand personally on the issue? As a parent, when my kids go to schools, when they go to public schools, I want them to be presented with the best thinking. I want them to be able to make decisions for themselves. I want them to see the best data. I personally think that the, the life, human life, and the world we live in wasn't created accidentally. I do think that there's a creator. I'm a Christian. I, I do think that God played a role in, in creating uh, not only Earth, but mankind now the way that he did it I'd certainly want my kids to be exposed to the very best science I don't want them to be to, I don't want any facts or theories or, or or explanations to be withheld from them because of political correctness the, the, the way we're going to have smart, intelligent kids expose them to the very best science and let them not only decide, but also let them contribute to that body of knowledge. That's what makes the scientific process so exciting. You get to go over there and find facts and data and, and test what's, what's come before you and challenge those theories. Okay. Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal, described in Republican circles as a Republican superstar, one of the Republicans of the future. Thank you very much, Governor, for joining us. Thank you, and happy Father's Day. And to you. Did he talk fast enough for y'all? Okay. <laughs> you can hear the double talk, right? And, and he, he referred to himself as a parent. I can guarantee you that none of his kids will ever go to a school that teaches creationism. They will, it will never happen. In fact, his, his children go to one of the best public schools um, in Baton Rouge, and I can guarantee you they would never learn creationism there, but he was more than happy to sign a bill so that other people's children might learn it in public schools. So anyway. Um, 
the Discovery Institute was watching every single thing that happened down in Louisiana. They were watching it. They sent Casey Luskin down there to accompany Caroline Crocker, uh, one of the creationists from the movie Expelled, who came down there to testify for the bill. In fact, when I walked into the state capitol at 8 o'clock in the morning, Morning on May 21st, 2008, the first person I laid eyes on was Casey Luskin. And there he was escorting Dr. Carolyn Crocker, who testified for the bill. So they were literally very, they were very heavily invested in Louisiana. They were watching everything. They were writing about Washita Parish in 2006. They were watching that develop. Um, they were watching these bills as they were moving through various state legislatures in 2008, one of which was Florida. Um, it was introduced in 2008, I think, in six different states, and Louisiana was and is still the only state that has passed this legislation. They were criticizing the Louisiana media and the way they covered um, the developments in Louisiana. There, They were criticizing James Gill at the Times-Picayune in New Orleans. And when Jindal signed the bill, they declared victory within minutes. This was in the morning papers on June 27, 2008, and their announcement went up about 7.15 a.m. Pacific time, which would have been about 9.15 in, in Louisiana. So they knew about it immediately. They probably knew about it before it hit the paper. So they got what they wanted. They declared victory. Louisiana was targeted. It was deliberately targeted because the factors that, they, that the Discovery Institute needed and that the Louisiana Family Forum needed all converged in 2008. And the Discovery Institute had been shopping around for just the right state, and they found it in Louisiana. And to show you how closely they're watching us, <clears throat> in 2009, the following year, a friend of mine, Dr. Um, um, to think of her name, uh, Holly Wilson, yeah, I was going to say Abby, Dr. Uh, Holly Wilson at University of Louisiana at Monroe, who was a Catholic philosopher, had written a column in the Monroe News Star uh, uh, saying that intelligent design is, is not at all good Catholic theology. Um, and one of the comments posted online to that article came from Bruce Chapman at the Discovery Institute. So they were watching even a small town newspaper like the News Star. And the first thing, the next thing we knew, David DeWolf had written this long rebuttal to Dr. Wilson's column, not Catholic and not theology. This is intelligent design and this is science. Uh, fortunately, I got to rebut his rebuttal, so I got the last word. But what this does is to show how closely they were watching developments in Louisiana. Now, Monroe is in Washita Parish, and, I, and that's why they were particularly watching uh, that newspaper. So now, um, in Louisiana, a teacher could conceivably use materials like this, which is the, the textbook that supplanted of pandas and people. You know the book that was the central piece of evidence in the Dover trial? Okay. Well, that book was explicitly about intelligent design. It had been explicitly about creationism. Um, but once that book was discredited in court, they had to have a new book to take its place, aimed at the high school audience. And so the Discovery Institute came out with Explore Evolution, which again is written in sanitized terminology. But it's very easy to show that it's a creationist book. Um, the authors are identifiable um, um, creationists, one of whom is a young earth creationist, Paul Nelson. There are a few of those at the Discovery Institute. Um, the concept of irreducible complexity is in the book, and that's an identifiably creationist concept. And of course, the subtitle, The Arguments For and Against Neo-Darwinism, is, is some of their code language. And they have all the standard attempts in the book to undermine evolution. So it's clear to show, it's easy to show that this is a creationist book. And John West, who is the associate director of the Center for Science and Culture at the Discovery Institute, actually pointed to this book and named it to a Louisiana newspaper as something that they hoped that would be used under the Louisiana law. Now, Daryl White at the Family Forum had a website for a number of years uh, called Origins Science. No, it was judgewhite.com, that's what it was. And he had a web page up there that was a creationist page, Origin Science. And on that page, he promoted, he was promoting another website called textaddons.com. That is the website of, of a gentleman, Charles Voss, Dr. Charles Voss, who's a retired professor of electrical and computer engineering from LSU. And he's a young earth creationist who came into my children's school district in 1994 
to try to get a, a creationist curriculum guide adopted, and I managed it to, keep, to keep it out with the help of organizations like the ACLU and the National Center for Science Education. But in 2002, when the Family Forum tried to stop the approval of new biology books and failed, he wrote creationist addendums to be used with all of the state-approved biology books, and he put them on this website, textaddons.com. And so you can go there, they're still there, he has about nine of them, a creationist addendum to be used with every state-approved biology book. Now, this is what the Louisiana Family Forum is promoting on its website. This is their current website, and they are promoting, they link to his textbook addendums and also to DVD modules, teaching modules as they call it, written by the Discovery Institute. is a DVD called Investigating Evolution. There it is, sold on the Discovery Institute's website, the Center for Science and Culture. So they are promoting explicit creationist materials for use in public schools under this new law. Now, what happened after the law passed? The next step was for the Board of Elementary and Secondary Education to write a policy that would implement the law. That policy would be placed in Bulletin 741, which is the Louisiana Handbook for School Administrators. It goes out to all the school districts and it informs principals and school board members and, and everybody at the local level what they can and cannot do under the law. And so the, the board, I'm gonna say Bessie for short, Board of Elementary and Secondary Education, that's what we call it, Bessie. Bessie, uh, the, they charged the staff at the Department of Education um, who are, they are administrative staff, to write a draft policy that would implement the law, that would explain to the school board members and the teachers and the principals what they were required to do or not required to do under the law. And the school, I'm sorry, the Department of Education staff did a very, very fine job. They called in an ad hoc committee to advise them, um, made up of science teachers and scientists, and they drafted this um, proposed policy and they put two very important statements in it that if, if, they had, if these statements had taken effect, if this policy is drafted, would have cut the law off at its knees. Okay, so I have to take my hat off to the, to the staff of the Department of Education. They have two very important parts in this draft policy. You can't see it, I'll read it to you. This one here says, religious beliefs shall not be advanced under the guise of encouraging critical thinking. See, they knew what this bill was about, using critical thinking as a, you know, uh, a code term for creationism. And then at the bottom, it says D4D, section D4D, materials that teach creationism or intelligent design or that advance the religious belief that a supernatural being created humankind shall be prohibited for use in science classes. Now, that's great stuff, right? really very strong, unequivocal statements. Well, the Louisiana Family Forum did not like those two statements. So, the, this draft policy was, was presented to the Board of Elementary and Sec Secondary Education on December 2nd, 2008 at its meeting. And they got their point man, Dale Baird, to put it on hold to give the Louisiana Family Forum time to try to gut this policy. So between December 2nd, 2008 and January 13th, 2009, they, Gene Mills, accompanied by a legislator, probably Senator Nevers, and a Bessie member, probably Mr. Baird, went down to the Department of Education and they pressured the staff to, to gut this language. Now, the, you can imagine, these are nice ladies that used to be science teachers. You've got a legislator, you've got a Bessie member coming in there. Um, they, they agreed to strike one statement. The one thing they agreed to strike was this one, uh, that, you know, about using real, um, critical thinking to advance religion. They, but they would not take this one out. They left the strongest one in there. They wouldn't budge on that one. So sometime between, uh, this happened between the two board meetings. So by the January 13th, 2009 meeting, okay, they, at that meeting, they managed to get that prohibition struck as well. They got the, the remaining prohibition against creationism struck from the, from the, the Board of Education's policy. Now. So this was engineered by Dale Baird, uh, who is the point man for the Louisiana Family Forum on the state board. The state superintendent of education, Paul Pasterek, signed off on this. And of course, Casey Luskin was very glad he was writing about this the whole time. So they gutted, the Family Forum gutted the policy that governs the implementation of the law that we now have. There are no protections against teaching creationism in that policy. 
Uh, and so the very next day, January 14th, um, Gene Mills told the American Family Association's news service that Louisiana was open for business. That's what he said. And of course, I added a little bit to that on my blog, open for business, creationists welcome. But he was gloating because he knew exactly what that meant, that now there was a green light for people to do whatever they wanted to do under the law. Now, when we were, when we were trying to stop the law in 2008, we had about nine different national science organi organizations write to the governor and ask him to veto the law, veto the bill. And of course, he didn't respond to any of them. He didn't respond to any of us at all, okay? And so the following year, on February the 5th, 2009, one of those organizations, the, Soci the Society for Integrative and Comparative Biology, SICB, wrote him again. And they told him that because he signed the bill, they decided not to hold their 2011 annual meeting in New Orleans. They had already solicited a bid, you know, for the whole conference package. But instead, they were going to Utah, right? Utah because he signed this bill and they were, were urging other professional societies to, to reconsider plans to host meetings in Louisiana. Now why were they going to Utah? Because in 2005 when um, a representative there by the name of Butters, I think his name was Dale Butters, tried to introduce a bill in their legislature, their state board of education, their state board released a multi-page document stating that teaching evolution was central to the K-12 curriculum in the state of Utah, and that's why they're gonna get the SICB meeting, and we lost it. So, what happened then? Well, the family forum wasn't quite done. They got control of the policy that implements the law, but they needed to get control of the complaint procedure, the review policy, in case a parent were to file a complaint about materials, that, supplementary materials that teachers might be using. And so the Louisiana Family Forum went back to the state board September 16, 2009, and they, they got control of the review procedure as well. Now, I want to introduce you to a few of these people, a couple of other people that are affiliated with them. You're going to see him again in a minute. This is John Aller. He is in the Department of Communicative Disorders at the University of Louisiana Lafayette. He has a linguistics degree. He is not a scientist of any shape. Um, there's Daryl White again. There's Jean Mills. And there's Lenny DeToro, who always says she's just a housewife, but she's really one of their people who goes, she shows up at all the committee meetings and things like that. Yeah, so there they are outside the, the meeting room of uh, the board in, down in Baton Rouge, uh, looking very pleased with themselves because they had co-opted the review procedure policy. There's John Aller again. Now let me, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about him as we go along, but John Aller is on the technical advisory board of the Institute for Creation Research. You know that organization? ICR. There he is at a meeting of creation scientists at the Creation Museum in Kentucky, right? Now you can imagine how pleased I was to find this photo. Um, and I have used it fairly extensively, but there he is, uh, he's, he's uh, affiliated with Answers in Genesis. He's written articles for their public, uh, for ICR for about 30 years, and he's written a couple, a couple of articles for Answers in Genesis. There he is. Now, so what did they do to the review procedure? Well, the, the, again, the Department of Education wrote up a proposal, a very good proposal, uh, that got diluted. If mama and daddy, for example, find out that Johnny or Janie's teacher is using something like Explore Evolution, what they have to do is to file a complaint with the Department of Education. Well, that's all well and good. But what happened is um, that the, 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 the procedure now is stacked against the complainers, right? Now, mom and dad get to appoint somebody to represent them. There's no stipulation on who that might be. It might be somebody very good, or it might be somebody who doesn't ver know very much about, you know, the issue at all. There's, there are no guidelines on that. But the principal in the school where the materials are being used gets to appoint a representative in the review committee. So does the publisher of whatever creationist materials are being used. And they, these people can invite their, their representatives, additional people, uh, into the review procedure. Somebody like David DeWolf, who helped write the Louisiana Science Education Act. Or somebody like Gene Mills, right, who runs the Family Forum. Or somebody like Charles Voss, who wrote the textbook addendums. Or somebody like John Aller, who is on the technical advisory board at the Institute for Creation Research and goes to meetings at the Creation Museum. So what happens is, now all of these people are, you know, of course, 
outnumber the parents, and the role of the Department of Education has been severely undermined. And so this is the, the, the way they managed to co-opt the review policy. So that's the status at the present time. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Aller. And, and, and this is really a, a message for scientists, because when scientists don't stand up and speak out to protect what they do, people like John Aller are the ones whose voices boards of education hear. Okay. Uh, John Aller has degrees in French, Spanish, and linguistics. He is an anti-vaccine crank, okay? He puts this stuff on his um, website at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. This is his blog. It's called The Autism Epidemic and Related Issues. Now, he was flying under the radar. People weren't, the media weren't really paying much attention to him. So I, I have written about him extensively on my blog, LASciencecoalition.org, and I outed him as a creationist uh, a few days before the board meeting uh, in December where we had to go protect the uh, process of approving state biology books because he was involved in an effort to try to get those books blocked. And so I've written about him twice at LASciencecoalition.org if you're interested. But anyway, he's written, he's a self-styled autism expert, but he, he's still promoting the idea that vaccines cause autism. Now, that's his University of Louisiana logo that he's put on his blog. He is a champion of Andrew Wakefield. Do you know who that is? You, Andrew Wakefield is the British doctor who lost his license to practice medicine because he used people's children as experimental subjects in a, in a study that was published in 1998 in The Lancet Medical Journal, which retracted the article early last year, and the, uh, he has lost his license. This year, the British Medical Journal, a different journal, uh, published an editorial accusing him of outright fraud. And so he is now a thoroughly discredited person uh, worldwide in the medical community. Well, this is who um, Aller actually brought to ULL in 2007 as one of the headliners of an autism conference that he organized. And he is still defending Wakefield on his website. Uh, and there is, I wrote about it, of autism and creationism, a strange Louisiana connection. So we have John Aller, who is a creationist. He's, he's anti-vaccine. He's pro-Wakefield with no science credentials, right? Using his university affiliation to promote anti-science propaganda, right? And these are the people that for, for years now, Louisiana public officials have been listening to, okay? Uh, when we managed to stop the attack on the biology books last year, late last year, that was a, a very rare victory for us. So what happened uh, last year? Well, in July, the summer of last year, one of the things we knew is that we'd start seeing people uh, interpreting the Louisiana Science Education Act as the green light for teaching creationism. And lo and behold, my own school board, right, literally, literally, right down the highway from me, I live on the same road, that I had fought with in 94 to keep creationism out, two of the board members in July announced that under the Louisiana Science Education Act, they were interested in teaching creationism. Just exactly what we predicted, just exactly what we knew, you know, that nobody was fooled about what this law was about. And this was in summer 2010. Now look at this headline. This is another paper. They haven't done anything yet, by the way. We've been watching them, but they haven't done anything. And the, and the two guys that proposed this are no longer on the board, so hopefully they won't do anything. But on, on August 8th, we had two stories in the paper on the same front page, huge school cuts, creation flap continues. Here they are, they, they because of lack of funding, they decided not to hire any substitute teachers at all for that year. Um, and here they were talking about teaching creationism, which tells you what happens when legislation like this is passed. I mean, you, you, you invariably are going to see some school board interpret it as exactly what it is. Now here we go uh, back to John Aller and the, the people from the Family Forum. They attacked the textbook selection process in, beginning in November of last year. And the Louisiana Coalition for Science um, managed to stop it, which was, a, a, as I said, a very rare victory for us. Um, they targeted the, um, the books that were up for approval by the state, one of which is a very well-known uh, biology textbook by my friend Ken Miller and his co-author Joe Levine. Um, and so they, fortunately, they failed. 
Um, this is a meeting of one of, the, it's a, it was a textbook advisory council uh, that met after the books had been approved by the textbook Ad adoption committee that had specifically been convened by the Department of Education to look at all these books over many months and they had already approved all of the books. They had to, they sent it to a, uh, when Bessie tabled the issue rather than approving the books, then it went to a textbook advisory council. And I'm showing you this because I, I just want to, you know, just crow a little bit more about the fact that we did win this round, but also to show you a young man sitting there in an orange jacket. His name is Zachary Coplin. There is Zach. He's a high school senior at Baton Rouge Magnet High School, a public school, who has taken it as his senior year project to try to get the Louisiana Science Education Act repealed. Okay. Um, and he is working very hard. He emailed me last summer, asked him if I would work with him on this. I didn't know who he was, and I checked it out, of, you know, what you always do. You Google him, right? Okay. And it, he was legitimate, and I've been very pleased to, to be working with him on this, and he's getting ready to send out a press release and try to kick into high gear. He went and testified before the advisory council for the textbooks and, and helped us get those books approved. That's Zachary Coplin there. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit of the news coverage uh, after the... Um, uh, this is my last video clip after the uh, board meeting. We'd gone down to Baton Rouge on December 7th, we, and the board had, we testified on this issue for three hours, 11.30 to 1.30. All right, they said it wasn't a debate about creationism versus evolution, but at times, that's exactly what it was. Today, the State Board of Education heard hours of testimony on whether they should or should not approve a new science textbook. WAFE's Tiana Williams was there for today's tense meeting. And it's the age-old debate of science versus religion. Is there any data, irrefutable evidence, that man originated from primates? Mr. That's Mayor, Mr. Bain. I don't think that the established science is really what is at issue today. Even after his question, committee chairman Dale Bayard reminded the audience at issue today whether they should accept new science textbooks that some argue are inaccurate. The books, like the current ones, only teach evolution. Our students deserve up-to-date textbooks, and no amount of supplementation can bring the old books up to the level of the new books. Students in the district haven't seen That's new Zach. science books in at least seven years. Some are concerned that means kids are missing out on new information and aren't being allowed to explore alternatives to science. All the Louisiana are. Family Forum, whom I represent here today, advocates teaching religious instruction in the science classroom alongside evolution. Those opposed to the new books say they're not going far enough to teach kids alternatives to evolution. I'm against adoption of these textbooks. I've read them all. There are many deficiencies in them. And I am a teacher, administrator, and a parent. Those in favor of the new textbooks say evolution is being presented fairly, and religion shouldn't be brought into the classroom. But the Bible is not a science book. Its purpose is to transform lives, not convey scientific information. But when it came time to vote... All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Record me as a no vote. The new books passed. Tiana Williams, WAFB, 9 News. Now, the full Board of Elementary and Secondary Education will vote Thursday to accept the new books. However, they say school districts will have the choice of whether they want to implement the new books. So we won that round, and uh, we had some wonderful people testifying, some of whom you heard. Uh, we had two clergy who did a wonderful job for us. Um, so that's, that's where we are now. So what's next in Louisiana? Well, what's next is... Zachary is kicking off his repeal effort. He has a website, repealcreationism.com. You know, <clears throat> there he is again. You can go and look at his website. Uh, we're not sure what's going to happen. This, this probably has a snowball's chance in hell, but we're going to try anyway. Um, and just to let you know what's been happening in other states very quickly. In 2009, other states had similar laws. Oklahoma, New Mexico, Florida, Iowa, Missouri, Alabama, it all, they all failed. Even in Texas, a similar bail bill was rejected, even in Texas. In 2010, last year, Kentucky, South Carolina, Missouri, bills didn't, I don't think they even got out of committee. 
And so far in 2011, we have five bills introduced. Uh, one in uh, Kentucky, two in Oklahoma, one in uh, Missouri, and they all are about academic freedom, intellectual freedom, using the code language. Uh, and since, since I gave my last presentation, we have two more, New Mexico and Tennessee. All right, and I had to add, I think there's another one. No, Tennessee's the last one, isn't it, Glenn? Tennessee's the last one. So, um, so I'm, I'm getting ready to conclude, but before I do, I just want to uh, mention a couple of organizations, and I, you know, I'm on the boards of, of each one. The National Center for Science Education, there, there are many wonderful organizations that you can support, and uh, they are arrayed here at your table. There, there are many of them. But since I'm on the board of these two organizations, I wanted to just to put in a plug. The National Center for Science Education that's run by Dr. Eugenie Scott um, is a clearinghouse for assistance with people who need help with creationism. And there we have a little page that shows how you can support ed evolution education, 25 things you can do. People often ask, well, what, what can we do? Well, we have a whole list of things you can do. Um, Americans United for Separation of Church and State. And by the way, we have two representatives of those organizations, Glenn Branch, who is our National Center for Science Education Deputy Director, and Mr. Kastorf, who is a member of the local chapter of the Americans United uh, for Separation of Church and State, is back there at the table. Um, and so there's Barry Lynn, um, that was, he was on with Anderson Cooper recently about something. And so we have um, a website too where you can find out what you can do, you can join, you can be an activist, you can join a local chapter. So I encourage you to support organizations like these two and others um, like your local groups that are represented here today that support the teaching of good science. Also, I, you know, Minga was saying, you know, we, we have to have fun and you can read all the cartoons. Well, that's really very in, in keeping with my last slide because we have to remember to laugh because we can get so seriously involved in this and, and the outlook can look so bleak that we can forget our sense of humor. I have a friend who blogs as the sensuous curmudgeon. He is a very good guy on this issue and he is, if you want to laugh, you want to go to his website, the sensuous curmudgeon. There he is, he posted a recent blog um, about the Oklahoma bill and the Senator Josh Brasheen who introduced it. Senator Josh Brasheen totally crazed, that's the title. He even did one about Louisiana, who sucked the brains out of Louisiana. <laughs> and so, so for the last one, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing back a, a post he did um, about Casey Luskin. A few years ago, Dan, when, can you see the picture? A few years ago, Casey Luskin was in Oklahoma at an intelligent design debate or something like that, and a blogger by the name of Abby Smith, is that her name, Glenn? Abby Smith, uh, who's one of the funniest critics of the intelligent design movement, uh, she flipped the bird at Casey. And Casey got his feelings hurt and wrote about it, which was a wonderful invitation to my friend the curmudgeon to write about Casey. And so with this last funny little picture, I'm going to say thank you very much and I hope we have some time for questions. The law is in place. Mm -hmm. The textbooks, uh, specifically creationist textbooks, haven't been officially adopted. No, they have not been. But there's still a possibility that any given teacher might use one? Yep. And uh, do we know whether there are any given teachers using them at this point? We haven't had any reports since the law was passed in 08. But prior to that, after the Washita Parish uh, policy was adopted, a biology teacher there had himself videotaped teaching creationist or intelligent design talking points in his class. And, 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 the, and the Louisiana Family Forum was distributing those videos. I actually happened to have one. And um, so we know that he was doing it, and they were doing it deliberately to push the, the envelope, but he's not there anymore. He's, he's in a different school, and he's an administrator. And since the law was passed, we haven't had any reports about teachers using any of these materials. Which, I mean, that could be good or bad. I mean, it could be happening, but we're just not hearing about it. If you did hear about it, would you, what would then be the 
the plan? Would there be litigation? Or? Oh, if we hear about it and we get a firm report that teachers are doing this, you can be sure that there will be litigation, yes. Thank you. If we can get a plaintiff. Two things. Uh, one, California uh, link to the Discovery Institute, of course, is Howard Amundsen. Oh, yes, he funds them, if and he's on their board them, of yes. directors, yes. Right. right. Uh, secondly, now, you, you um, mentioned that there are a number of states that have these laws that have been introduced. Uh, yeah, to, they're not passed yet. I, I understand. But to <laughs> your knowledge, are those uh, laws being um, coming out of uh, the American Legislative Exchange Council? No, they're coming from the Discovery Institute. They're coming directly mm -hmm. from the yeah, Discovery Yeah, they are all, and, and the laws that have been uh, introduced this year very closely track the Louisiana law. Ah. The bills are, and, and I think that that is consciously, uh, that, that's intentional because they figure, well, no one's filed suit yet, so the best thing to do is to, tr to track the Louisiana law closely, and, and, if, and if these other states pass the law, they can expect you know, to be constitutionally safe. Yeah, that's what they're doing. <clears throat> no, I, was in, I, I was citing mostly the Texas cases where a lot of Oh, the gosh, Texas is a whole other country. The selection committee was not made up of very many scientists. Huh. Yeah. yeah. You know, in, in Texas, you had a board split down the middle with a, with a one-vote majority on the moderate side, but you had enough radicals that they, that they got um, people involved in these processes that really tried to sabotage the whole process. I, I think the, 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 the only thing that I can recommend as an antidote is for scientists to be proactive, to get to know your elected officials, to get to know your Board of Education elected officials, and to offer your services to uh, participate in these committees, textbook review committees, um, science standard revision committees. Very often, you know, the process is done and people don't know what's going on. So I think that the best thing to do is to be proactive and to offer your services and to monitor these processes. I I'm not sure I've addressed your concern exactly. Hi, I was wondering if you would uh, care to speculate on future tactics and strategies that you think the intelligent design movement may uh, utilize in the future, and also if you perceive com some kind of uh, slowing in the passing of such legislative initiatives in the future to a point that a threat, direct threat of such legislation being passed would no longer exist. Okay. Um, first question was about what we foresee them doing in terms of tactics. Well, you know, they've about run out of tricks. We know, we know all their tricks. They just keep recycling them. Um, the fact that, they're, that they've, pushed against, they've been pushed against the wall so that they have to use code language is an, is, is an indication of how successful we've been in the courts, right? They cannot word proposals or legislation explicitly in terms of intelligent design after the Dover case, after the verdict. So they had to go back and pull out of storage these old creationist code terms that they're now using. But that also makes it trickier when you start talking about litigation, okay? But I can, you know, creationists never really come up with anything new. They just recycle, okay? And, but, but their strategy is to try to disguise themselves after every court defeat. And so what, you know, what they'll do after this academic freedom legislation uh, program, I, I really can't predict. I, well, in, in a sense I can, because if they don't succeed at the state level, they'll just drop down and try to get it adopted at the local level. I mean, they're, they're going to go for whatever they can get. Okay. Now, what was your second question? Oh, my second question was if you, uh, like you said, they were running out of tricks. Mm -hmm. If you ever think that we'll actually re reach a, a point where such legislation will be so unlikely to be passed that we can rest a little easier. <laughs> that, that, okay, some things have to happen first, and, and, and this is a big if. It will happen if enough people elect enough uh, school board members and members of the legislature who don't buy into this crap, okay? Right. All right, it, that has to happen. I mean, people have to, these are, there are politicians, there are enough politicians who will exploit this, and there are enough Americans who still buy into creationism to make this very unlikely to go away in the foreseeable future. So this is a political problem, okay, and the best way to address it is politically. Re-educating the American public through the media, um, improving the way science teachers are trained at the undergraduate level, that's all important, that all needs to be done. 
but it's a political problem, and, and in the short term, the best way to attack it is by electing public officials and holding their feet to the fire. And for that, the people who support good science have to get politically involved. They have to get just as politically aggressive and politically well organized as the religious right, okay. who have really gone heads and tails far above us on that, on that score. That may have answered my question, because it's such a political issue, it's, it's out of the, it's out of the fight of academics, mm -hmm. although that's where the, the battles happen. From the university standpoint, are there pressures that can be brought from universities in terms of uh, what they will and won't accept oh, by gosh. their students or the students that they will and won't accept who have gone through a creationist classroom, so to speak? And, it, and, and part of that is if, if universities could do that, do you end up throwing the baby out with the bathwater? I mean, you get rid of students that otherwise would be great students? You know, I, I think that universities and scientific organizations should be much more aggressive than they've been. In Louisiana, the problem we had is that we could not really get much help from academic scientists. And we had a, a few really wonderful ones that came down and helped us in Baton Rouge. But by and large, the Louisiana science community sat this out. They sat it out. And we got no help from them with the exception of a handful of people in 2008. Um, and they need to be more vocal, they need, to be, um, they need to be more visible, and they need to exert some pressure on public officials. And they're usually too scared to do that. Um, another thing that should happen is that the science organizations need to be much more protective of um, their disciplines by telling states, if you attack what we do, don't expect us to bring our dollars into your states. You know, you know, so, yes, university academics should be more vocal, they should be more active, and some of them are. There are some states where they have wonderful people who help. But by and large, most, most members of the scientific community are not actively involved. Um, and that's one of the things that those of us who work in this area are constantly asking them to become more involved. Did I, did I answer your question? Yeah. About, it was yeah. about university yeah. academics, right? Yeah. You don't get tenure for fighting creationists, right. and that's a big part of the problem. Yeah. Yeah, it, it appears to me that basically, if you're going to use the same language from state to state, that it's almost nonsense, is it not? I mean, you mean in the all legislation? Of these, all of these different states that are now mm -hmm. promoting this thing are using probably the exact same phrases as very close, yes. Louisiana, and it seems to me that does this mean basically that when it comes before each state that it's basically brand new? I'm sorry, that when what? That it's basically brand new to them that they don't have any way of dealing with it other than to basically pass legislation or whatever that goes with it? I mean, I'm, 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 it seems to me that they're ignorant, that the legislators are ignorant. They're letting this stuff go through. And it would seem to me that they should be aware that this is going on, that the Dover and in 2002 and everything, that, that I'm, I'm not what's sure. What's going on? Okay, I'm not sure I understand your question. In other words, are they just being caught out of the blue? Don't they know what's going on? Don't they know about Louisiana? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I mean, is this well, like, is I, that yeah, the game? I think, yeah, I think they know. It's just that they don't care. You know, there, there are a num there are always people in state legislatures who will cater to the religious right and try to introduce bills like this. Fortunately, up until now, in none of those other states have they succeeded. So those other states have been a lot smarter than Louisiana in refusing to pass versions of this legislation. And honestly, I think that when the SICB pulled out of Louisiana or when they decided to stay out, that was big news. In fact, that's what got the attention of the national media, not the passage of the law, but SICB's boycott of Louisiana, that got people's attention. And I think that last year, that spoke loudly to in the states, this is just my own guess, that spoke loudly to legislatures who did not want other organizations to boycott their states. But now we're far enough away from that 2009 letter to Bobby Jindal from SICB to where some of these guys may not know about it and may have forgotten about it. Um, I can't predict what's going to happen, but I do know in these other states, or most of these other states where these bills have been introduced, there are very good, committed activist groups there who have gone to work to try to stop them. Okay, so hopefully they'll be successful. Yeah, I think most of the time the legislators know exactly what they're doing, they just don't care. Amazing, thank you. Yeah. 
Number one, are there any other countries similar to ours that are having this debate, that the world you have this situation going on? No, no, no okay. other industrialized country. Now, I, I will tell you that there are pockets of uh, support for creationism in Europe more than people used to think. There's a level of support in, um, in the United Kingdom and in northern Belgium and southern Holland, but, and, and also in Australia, but nothing like we have here, nothing like we have here. Okay, and number two, when the argument is used that all we're trying to do is to uh, have more academic freedom, it's, it's very difficult to counter that argument. It really is. I mean, how, how does one do oh, it? Oh, no, it's easy to counteract it. It is? Teachers already, ha first of all, <clears throat> teachers at the K through 12 um, level, they don't have total academic freedom. They have a captive audience of other people's children, right? Okay, this is not like the university. They do, they do not have the level of academic freedom that we have at the university level. And even our freedom is arguably not total and absolute in the universities. So when you're teaching minor children who belong to other people, you are supposed to be teaching what the school district re requires that you teach. And so they don't have academic freedom in that respect. They do have sufficient latitude to choose materials to supplement the approved materials. Um, they, for example, in Louisiana, teachers have always had the, the freedom to choose supplementary materials but they have to be materials that su support the Louisiana science framework, which are our science standards. And so that's one thing. The other thing is that academic freedom, I can show you, I've written about this, the creationists have been using it for decades. In fact, they used it in 1981 in Louisiana, and the Supreme Court ruling, the written opinion in the Edwards versus Aguilar case, specifically rejects academic freedom as a justification for teaching creationism. So we have two very good pieces of, two very good rejoinders for that I think it's quite easy to use. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yes, sir, thank you. Oh, there's Minga. And this yes. will be our last question. <laughs> um, when we changed administrations, uh, there was uh, a lot of talk about how science was going to now come back. And I believe also last year, was it not that I'm trying to move out of the local level and out of the states and look at what's happening at the national at level? the national level with the <laughs> curriculum, uh, uh, the national curriculum idea. Can you give us an update on that? Uh, Texas didn't okay it, but maybe there were a lot of states that you're did. talking about a common set of science standards. Exactly. Uh, there is an effort to write one. It um, now it, it wouldn't be mandatory. It would be voluntary for the states to adopt. And Louisiana has actually signed on to this process. The question is, how much latitude are states going to have to tweak these standards if they adopt a common set of core science standards? I do know that some states are involved in this. It wouldn't be mandatory. That wouldn't fly. Uh, but it would, it would help to put some, un some uniformity into science education across the country. Um, and so, that, yes, that is something that's ongoing. I don't know how many states have signed on to this. Okay. 